Hi learners, students, good morning to you all. We are now going through immunogenetics. Myself, Prasess Kripanidhi, presenting with help from the Department of Biotechnology, Vietnam's Foundation for Science, Technology and Research, deemed university, situated in a rural environment, Padlamudi, Punto district, Andhra Pradesh, India. So hitherto we are given four units. The first one is overview of the immune system. The second is on immunoglobulins. The third unit was on antigen-antibody interaction. The fourth unit was on T-cell and B-cell differentiation. So now the fifth unit is on immunoinformatics, wherein we have gone through the web-based tools, the introduction to the immunoinformatics, and epitope design and mapping. Okay, so in all those things, how to have the immunological related simulations in the computer based web based tools. Okay, now we are doing this similar genetics. It is quite interesting that there are uh, five to six uh, receptors like toll like receptors, which is involved in innate immunity, and kills killer immunoglobulin like killer immunoglobulin like receptors, which are present in NK cells. Okay, so from our India, we are having Rajalingam, Rajalingam from Madurai is now settled in America. And there is another uh, professor by name, is, uh, Dr. Sanjeevi, Dr. Karni, Karni Sanjeevi, who is settled in Sweden, Karnan's Council of Medical Sciences. They have done good amount of work on immunogenesis, particularly related to killer immunoglobulin like receptor genes. With them, I was associated and did some work related to preeclampsia. Preeclampsia means the one that is associated with the pregnancy induced hypertension, pregnancy induced hypertension, what is uh, the KIRS relation, okay, so that, that's what, so from TLR, KIRS, then HLA class 1, HLA class 2, B cell receptor gene and T cell receptor gene, so like this, the six varieties, they are highly polymorphic, except TLRs, okay, let us see those things. The objectives of this immunogenetics is to define the term immunogenetics, to review the genetics and the polymorphism of TLRs, toll like receptors, KIRS, killer immunoglobulin like receptors, and major histocompatibility complex 1, MSC2, B cell receptors, and T cell receptors. So these are all highly polymorphic, except TLRs are only 12 to 15. Let us see. So now let us uh, go through the expected outcomes that the learners are expected to secure these things at the end of the topic. That is the importance of immunogenetics in relation to the tailored medicine will be known. The genetics and polymorphism of the genetics and the polymorphism of TLRs, KIRS, MSC1, MSC2, B cell receptor complex and TCR will be understood. Okay. Now, so there is a video on stir compatibility. Just to go through this video. This is the Stanford Histocompatibility Immunogenetics and Disease Profiling Lab. And our mission is to provide the highest quality, most informative, state-of-the-art histocompatibility information to the transplant physicians and surgeons uh, so that they can go forward with transplantation and they can manage their patients well post-transplant with the information of, regarding compatibility. One of the things that we've done is we've invented, Ji Chen in the lab has invented, a new technology called C1Q uh, antibody testing. This particular platform that he's developed allows us to not only know that the patient has antibody to their donor either before transplant or after transplant, but also to determine the kind of antibody that is. Our research mainly focuses on the mechanism of antigen or donor-specific immunity. Our goal is trying to develop an in vitro 
a system for monitoring donor-specific immunity in transplantation recipients. We're fortunate to work with this Easter Comedy Lab. Not only they provide us high quality and consistent testing, but they think outside of the box and they brought us new testing, which I think is very important in this day and age where the sensitivity of text, the testing is, is, uh, is increasing and we have to find clinical relevance. Purchase the C1Q in our hands with the desensitization is helping us to kind of delineate which antibodies could be harmful or not and then be able to proceed with the transplant in a safer way. Another assay that we've developed at Stanford, which we feel is really key to helping the physicians and the surgeons understand whether or not to go forward with a transplant, is what we call the DSA flow cross match. The DSA flow cross match is both a shorter method, so it gives a faster answer, reduces the cold ischemia time. It gives you a more specific answer, so you know exactly what the nature of the reaction is. And it gives you a definitive answer in terms of whether you can go forward with transplant or not. I study the role of the HLA receptors and their relationship with natural killer cell receptors and modulating the immune response and how that affects transplant outcome. This lab is very special in that there is a number of people here with great talent in next generation sequencing. The platforms for doing the analysis exist here and so there's like there's a real synergy of knowledge and resources to be able to do this work here. And we've developed ourselves different assays for both looking at uh, specific gene um, coding regions and then slicing those together, piecing those together, and then doing a genotype analysis on that. But then we have a second tier analysis we've developed for whole genome, I mean, whole gene sequencing where we're able to get just the coding and the non-coding regions, and that could have a huge impact also on donor matching and transplantation outcome as well. Marcelo fernandez Vina is another one of the co-directors of our laboratory, and he is a global expert in HLA gene sequences and polymorphism. And his particular area of expertise is in bone marrow and stem cell transplantation and in performing uh, global searches for patients who have very difficult to match uh, HLA types where it looks like no one in the world is a match. In these days, uh, we type uh, patients and donors but by technologies that allow us to, per uh, to achieve high resolution testing. And these are done by uh, the common methods of uh, nucleotide sequencing that allow us to test certain segments of the HLA gene. We have recently embarked in uh, investigating uh, novel technologies, this would be the so-called next generation sequencing methods that allow us to get ma uh, massive sequences where we can actually get full eight coverage of all the uh, of all the coding and non-coding segments of the HLA genes and we can really have a more accurate uh, evaluation of the HLA types of the patients and donors. The future of this lab is very exciting, very, very exciting, because we already have novel technologies in the pipeline that are almost ready to be marketed, which are going to totally change the paradigm for how we look at cellular immunity, how you assess that in a transplant setting, how you assess that in disease susceptibility, and also to look at drug resistance in, um, in patients who are, for example, transplant patients where the physicians need an answer today, but the methods that are available right now take weeks to get an answer for. I'm most proud of the 
quality and extent of information that we provide to the clinical services it, so that they can do their best job at treating the patients with the most state-of-the-art information and the highest quality uh, results. Just now we have gone through this video that explains how MSV molecules are involved in histocompatibility because of the histocompatibility reactions that are being done through HLA typing and also MLR reactions. We used to do the transplantation, surgical transplantation. Now let us understand the immunogenetics. Immunogenetics is the study of the genetic basis of immune response. Genetic basis of immune response. It includes the study of normal immunological pathways and identification of genetic variations. That is, HLAs are uh, varieties of HLAs, varieties of KIRS, KIRS. There are 16 genes in KIRS. Okay. Uh, that result in immune defects, which may result in the identification of new therapeutic targets for immune diseases. So, let me again read Immunogenetics is the study of the genetic basis of the immune response. It includes the study of normal immunological pathways and the identification of genetic variations that result in immune defects, which may result in the identification of new therapeutic targets for immune diseases. That's what here immunogenetics is having importance in personalized medicine. Okay. Now, as I was indicating to you, immunogenetics encompasses TLRs. The first one, they are involved in innate immunity. The next one, KIRS, killer immunoglobulin like receptor genes. TLRs means they are toll like receptor. The second one is KIR. The third one is TCR. The fourth one is MSC class 1. The fifth one is MSC class 2. The last one that is shown here is BCR. So we are going to discuss these genes. They are the genes, they are the receptors, and relating genes are uh, involved in immune functions. Okay. So now let's see the TLRs. So TLRs are present on all leukocytes. They are the first sentinels of the innate immune system. So as you see in the next diagram, there is TLR1, TLR2, up to TLR10 are shown here, more than TLR12, 15 are there. Each one is specific to one type of uh, palms, pathogen associated molecular patterns. That is, uh, pathogens are having set of patterns. Those set of patterns are being recognized by our macrophages, that is, dendritic cells, by these TLRs. Okay, if these TLRs we are lacking with these TLRs, if we are lacking with these genes, okay, then our macrophages cannot identify a pathogen. Okay, if it doesn't identify pathogen, pathogen easily, what is it called, uh, uh, pervades in our host, in our in our host system. So that's what these TLRs are very much essential to target the pathogens. Okay, now let us see a few aspects of uh, these receptors involved in innate and adaptive immunity. Okay, now the first one, innate immunity, we come across this type of the TLRs, toll like receptors. They identify a particular, uh, a particular palms, pathogen associated molecular patterns like double standard RNA and uh, double standard DNA, or even if you say LPS, lipopolysaccharide, and MANOS, several of those things. If you see on the other side in the adaptive immunity, we come across the T cell receptors. T cell receptors are developed through the adaptive immunity, through experiential, so that they are highly specific. So, distribution of these receptors, they are non clonal. They are there, they have been evolved, evolved in human beings. So, this particular adaptive immune response is clonal. And discrimination of self and non self. With regard to this, they still like receptors. They, they are not involved in the discrimination. Only the TLRs and this toll like this T cell receptors, they are involved in toll like uh, what is it called? The discrimination between self and non self. Okay. Self and non self means self is MSA molecules. 
Okay, so this uh, MSA molecules they recognize in both the cases. So TCR, T cell receptor complex, let us see now. So here in this particular diagram, the alpha, beta, and this is uh, the, the top one is MSA molecules, and the one which is there below that is uh, the T cell receptor complex, wherein alpha chain, beta chain. Okay, alpha chain, beta chain is the one that is receiving this, uh, what is this called, the, the peptide through MSA molecules. MSA molecule is presenting the peptide to the T cell receptor complex. So, apart from the alpha, beta, which is having the variable chains, there is uh, gamma, delta, epsilon, eta. Hmm. Apart from that, CD4 cells of the CD4, uh, one receptor of uh, T helper cell is getting bind to the beta component of the MSC class 2. Okay. So, that is all the TCR complex wherein there is good amount of variation. Okay. 10 to the power of 15 type of the variation with regard to the alpha and beta change. So, this is called the B cell receptors wherein IgM, IgM is shown. Okay. IgM will bind to the antigen. So, as a result, the, the, there is first signal. Later again, second signal comes with CD21. Like that, the B cell undergoes uh, a sort of a uh, maturation and differentiation, uh, and there is involvement of RAG1, RAG2 gene. As a result, uh, the B cell undergoes somatic hypermutation. It produces similar globulins, those details we see now. So, this was the B cell BCR genetics, wherein lambda light chain, there is about in the, vari in the variable region, the 30 variable genes, alleles are there. Okay. So, if you take a kappa light chain, the 40 variable alleles are there, okay, joining alleles are 1 to 5. And if you take a heavy chain, the heavy chain variable region is having nearly 65 alleles, so much of combination, okay. If, so, all these things are the variable region, constant region, there are constant regions, uh, there are 5 isotypes and sub, including subtypes, there are 9 because gamma 1, gamma 2, gamma 3, gamma 4 are there. Okay, so like that uh, alpha 1, alpha 2 are there, with that there are 9, so all these things are uh, mixed in various combinatorial fashion, so that we will be having enormous potential to produce the immunoglobulins to suit to the epitope. Okay, so now I get infected with the corona, tomorrow I may get infected with Ebola, this coronavirus immunoglobulins may not meet Ebola. And again, they, they have tomorrow I may meet influenza virus, okay, again my system has to reproduce immunoglobulins to suit to the influenza. So that's what these combinations of uh, lambda variable, kappa variable and heavy chain by, uh, heavy chain variable genes, okay, all those genes, they are all combined in a different fashion that is uh, happy hypersomatic mutation fashion. As a result, they produce immunoglobulins highly complementary to the epitopes of the antigen, okay. So now let us see the T cell receptor genetics. Here the alpha chain variable G, variable uh, V variable uh, G, alleles are 50, beta chain variable alleles are 57, diversity joining alleles are sub J, in the alpha chain joining alleles are 70, beta chain joining alleles are 30. This combination will be enormous. For a VDJ recombination. So let us see here the first one variable joining and constant. Okay. Now in the heavy chain the variable dj that is diversity joining region joint now here the variable and joining region has come now by the time if you come the messenger rna molecule is getting ready with this uh, selected variable selected joining selected diversity selected constant region now with this the protein molecule is made okay the chain light chain now this is what we have to understand with the way diagram i secured from this let sources, so, somatic hypermutation B cell. See, on the sixth day, so now the B cell is getting prompted by the T helper cell through MSC class 1 and peptide epitope. So now there is a various mutations, somatic hypermutations are going on. Okay, in this year, so mutations are silent, yellow bars are silent, neutral bars are pink, and deleterious bars are red, and positive bars are blue. Okay, so up to sixth day, trials keep going on in the B cell. By more mutations keep happening by the time it crosses the 8th day. Okay. Now, by the time it comes nearer to the 16th day, there is negative selection, much of uh, the mutations which are not complementary, which are not complementary to the epitope, they are deleted. Only the final things are selected. Now, these are the 
ex expansion of the B cells, it improved antigen binding. Okay, and the more mutation. So these are the what they call the complementary aspects in the hyper variable regions of the immunoglobulin. They they were they are they are made complementary to the epitopes. Okay, so like this, the B cell undergoes variations, somatic hypermutations. Now, so with regard to the receptor genetics, if we take up the immunoglobulins heavy chain, immunoglobulins uh, kappa chain and lambda chain, variable segments 40, 70, diversity segments 25, 0 and joining segments 6, 5 kappa and 4 lambda and all these things become number of B chain pairs 1.9 to 10 to the power of 6, junctional diversity, total diversity 5 to 10 to the power of 13. So if you take up uh, alpha and beta chains of the T cell receptors, there is 10 to the power of 18. Okay, so much of diversity is possible. That's what immunomics is having more prominence now, genomics and proteomics, that genomics and proteomics now. So now let us see the MSC class 1, class 2. This also we have been saying just for the purpose of revising here because there is good amount of polymorphism in MSC class 1 and class 2. So nomenclature is HMA A, B, C, E, F, G. So, these are all coming under MSC class 1. Class 2, DP, D2, DR, DM. Okay, in that, the one which is marked red called B of class 1, DR of class 2 are highly polymorphic. We see in the next slide. So, they are found on all nucleated cells, MSC nucleated cells, MSC class 2 are present on the leukocytes. Okay, recognized by MSC class 1 is recognized by CD8 TC cells, right? A toxic T leukocyte. MSC class 2 is recognized by CD4. T helper cells. Okay, so functions of MSC class one, class two is both presentation, presentation of antigen to T cytotoxic lymphocyte. Okay, particularly the viral antigens. With regard to the MSC class two, presentation of antigen to T helper cells. In turn, T helper cell produces secret, what is that called? Full of cytokines, such cytokines. Okay, so now let us see HLA gene structure. HLA genes are present on chromosome six. And the chromosome 6 is having the bigger arm Q, small arm, short arm called the P. And in the P arm, they are located on 21, uh, that is uh, CT Morgan's location. Okay, to D, P, D, Q, D, R, B, C, A, like that. So now, so these are all the arrangement. D, P, D, Q, D, R, B, C, A on the gene arrangement. So like this, uh, the, comp the HLA molecules, complexes are arranged in the genome. Now, these HLA complexes are co-dominant. If you are having HLA class 1, A1 and A, and, uh, A20, so both are uh, co-dominant. A1, A20, both will be there with us. Because father is having A1, mother is having A20, will be changed to be having A1 and A20, both combination also. Okay. So now let us see the HLA polymorphism. HLA A is 1600 alleles. HLA-B is 2200 alleles in the population. Which allele we are having, which allele you are having, it all varies. Okay, HLA-C. With regard to the DR, if you take up 1000 alleles are there in HLA-2, class 2. So that's what here, total of uh, HLA-G alleles are 6800 alleles. So, so much of uh, allelic, allelic variation in HLA. So there are diseases which are associated with HLA. They do not, HLA does not cause the diseases. If anyone is having the disease, they identify the gene here. That's what uh, the genome-wide association study, genome-wide association study, GIVAS. So like that's what HLA disease association. So they are listed here. Insulin dependent diabetes mellitus. The relative risk is only 7.9 with regard to the DR3 and all those things. Okay. Now, so this HLA is also involved in the rejection of the graft because allele graft, that is the graft from other individual, if it is taken to us, if uh, both of us are genetically different, of course we both belong to the same species, graft is being rejected. Xenograft means the two different species, again here again the HLA does not match here, as a result invariably there is graft rejection. So now we will go to the killer immunoglobulin like receptor genes. They are present on the natural killer cells along with the receptor, leukocyte receptor complex. There are KIR genes, nearly 16 KIR genes are there. There is diversity among the KIR genes. We will see now the diversity. So let us know the KIR function, uh, that is NK cell function and cytotoxic T lymphocyte function. Okay, so NK cell, what is it called? MSC molecule. If it looks into the MSC molecule, 
NK cell is getting inhibited and there is no activatory response. With regard to this uh, cytotoxic T lymphocyte, the cytotoxic T lymphocyte also looks into the HLA molecule, but HLA molecule, if it presents any peptide, then only it is activated. If HLA molecule is alone, you see, cytotoxic T lymphocyte doesn't do any action. So now, let us see in the second diagram, cytotoxic T lymphocyte is now facing the target cell that is presenting a viral peptide, so that cytotoxic T lymphocyte kills the cell. Now, on the other side, if you look into the NK cell, NK cell is now is unable to search. NK cell is unable to search, uh, what is that called, MSC molecule, self molecule. It is now seeing only the missive self molecule or altered self molecule. As a result, NK cell is again killing the target cell. So, these are the two functions. If uh, one of the functions that uh, say cytotoxic T lymphocyte does is, if MSC molecule presents viral antigen to the cytotoxic T lymphocyte, then this cell will die. Cytotoxic T lymphocyte kills the one that is presenting. So, with regard to the NK cell, if NK cell sees that there is no self molecule, there is only either missed self or altered self or uh, there is uh, something non self is there, then NK cell kills. So, there is no question of antigen presentation, it is only the presence of uh, missed cell and uh, what is that called uh, the altered cell or non self. If any one of these things present, NK cell kills. So that is the difference between these two. So this is again NK cell function wise. So NK cells are located on the 19th chromosome along with the uh, leukocyte receptor complex. Yeah, let us see now. So in this, if you see, there are two domain kits. Two domains are there. There are three domain kits. So some of the kits are short tail, transmembrane thing is short tail. Some of the kits are long tail. That's what uh, they're classified. 2DL, yes, 2DS, 2DL, 3DS, and 3DL. Like that, they're all classified. Now, like this, this is the normal case. A kir, 2DL. That is two domain long tail. So now this is also kirs and HLAs. They follow the Mendelian pattern. So what's, that's what we are saying, the gametes. So this is very interesting. You all can do the project work related to this. How the parent population contains what type of kids, what type of HLA, what is the offspring population contains. So this is a good exercise. Now among all uh, kid genes, there are 16 kid genes we mentioned. Kid 3 dl 2 is highly polymorphic. Welcome back to Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to do an overview of the functions of natural killer cells, part of the innate immune system. So first of all, let's go over what NK or natural killer cells are. First of all, they are a type of lymphocyte. Now, normally when people hear the term lymphocyte, they think of helper T cells and cytotoxic T cells. Um, natural killer cells are very, very similar to cytotoxic T cells. Um, typically, the normal cytotoxic T cell that we're used to hearing about is part of the adaptive immune system, and those T cells specifically target only one antigen. Okay, um, That's why they're part of the adaptive or specific immune system. Natural killer cells do not specifically target one antigen. Um, for that reason, natural killer cells can target a, a wide variety of abnormal cell types, and they're part of the innate immune system. In fact, one thing you'll typically hear natural killer cells do is participate in something called immunological surveillance. So what is immunological surveillance? Well, basically, they roam your body, these natural killer cells, and they just look for things that are abnormal. So something that could be abnormal could be an invading pathogen, Something that's abnormal could be a virus-infected cell, okay? Typically, when a virus has infected a cell, that cell fails to express normal self-MHC. So let's talk about how a natural killer cell recognizes a normal, healthy self-cell from an abnormal cell of any kind. Okay. This right here, this is, we're supposed to believe right here in my mouse, is that is a normal self cell, okay? Now, in all reality, in a healthy individual, a natural killer cell should not kill a healthy self cell, okay? Let's just suppose this was, I don't know, a liver cell, I mean, whatever it is, I mean, just a normal healthy self cell. 
Well, that normal self cell displays its self antigen on its MHC1 proteins on its cell surface. Well, the natural killer cell looks for two things, okay? It looks for, first of all, um, proteins on the surface of that self cell, and those certain proteins are actually able to bind to an activation receptor on the natural killer cell, okay? So natural killer cells possess both an activation receptor, and there's actually multiple kinds. We're not going to get that detailed. And the same thing goes for inhibitory receptors. They have both of those. Well, if these uh, surface molecules on the target self cell if the activation receptor was the only thing there, then the natural killer cell would activate and it would kill the target cell, which in this case is a self cell, and you don't want that. So what natural killer cells have is they have inhibitory receptors that can recognize self-MHC1, so a normal antigen displayed on self-MHC1 proteins. And if this inhibitory receptor recognizes those self-MHC1 proteins, then the inhibitory receptor, you could think of the inhibition outweighs the activation, and the natural killer cell will just leave that cell alone. And that's why natural killer cells don't kill any of our own self cells, is because all of our normal healthy self cells display normal antigen on MHC1. Okay? So what happens when a natural killer cell runs across an abnormal cell? Now, for example, if we're talking about a pathogen such as a bacterial cell. First of all, bacterial cells do not even have MHC proteins. MHC proteins are something that are, um, at least from a human's perspective, they're unique to our eukaryotic cells. So bacteria do not have MHC proteins. So first of all, there wouldn't be any MHC protein here. Um, another option is this could be a virally infected cell. So this could be a self cell but it's been infected by a virus that's now inside the cell. Now let me ask you a question. If the virus had successfully gotten inside one of our own cells and it started um, reproducing, it reproduces virions, let me ask you a question. If a natural killer cell just, you know, basically did what complement proteins do, which is insert a membrane attack complex into the membrane and the cell bursts, um, what would happen? Well, the virions would all just leave and they would then go and affect other cells. So natural killer cells are a little bit more organized than just simply poking a hole in the membrane and the cell blows up, basically. Natural killer cells, what they do is, when they either fail to recognize an MHC protein at all, or they detect abnormal antigen on an MHC1 protein, which is the case for usually a virus-infected cell, what the natural killer cell does is it says, well, there's nothing inhibiting me, but it's able to be activated, okay? So overall, the activation now outweighs the inhibition, and the natural, cell will kill, natural killer cell will kill this abnormal cell. And the way it does it is natural killer cells contain granules that themselves contain a bunch of proteins and enzymes. And one of the types of proteins in natural killer cells are called perforins. So perforins get their name from the term perforating. So what is perforating? Well, if you perforate something, it means you do poke a hole. But the mechanism of this is a little bit different. So the perforin proteins, they assemble themselves in a pore very similar to the way that complement pro proteins in the membrane attack complex work. The difference is, though, rather than just simply allowing the cell to lyse, what the natural killer cell does is also within the granules, there are enzymes that are able to activate apoptotic enzymes within this cell, and apoptotic enzymes are called caspases. And there are enzymes in these granules called granzymes and granulysins, and these enzymes, the natural killer cell literally puts through the hole created by the perforins, and they go inside the target cell. And those granzymes and granulysins are able to activate caspases inside this cell. Caspases are a normal part of eukaryotic cells. And caspases initiate apoptosis. So rather than the natural killer cell just poking a hole and the cell bursts, because that would release all the virions if it's a virally infected cell, the natural killer cell induces apoptosis in that cell. And when that happens, apoptosis is a much more controlled way of killing a cell. And so it because the, the death is contained inside the cell, the virions will actually all be killed. 
So natural killer cells are very good at targeting and killing virally infected cells without letting the virions actually spread. And in fact, I mentioned at the beginning of this video that our natural killer cells are very similar to cytotoxic lymphocytes um, that are part of the adaptive system. And one of the other similarities that's really important is cytotoxic lymphocytes also use the perforin pathway. They are able to puncture a hole with perforin and insert granzymes, granulicins, and they can also induce apoptosis in a, a target cell. Okay, so hopefully this gives you a little bit of nice information on natural killer cells, how they work. Um, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much. So let us go to the summary. The definition for immunogenetics is given. The immunodilated genes, namely TLR, KIRS, MSC, BCR, TCR are elucidated. The polymorphism HLA, KIR, TCR is described. In this polymorphism, I did not mention about the TLR, total like this class. Okay. The Mendelian inheritance of diabetic class, including KIRS and HLA, is shown. It is most important which you can work out. Somatic hypermutation in B cell receptor genes. This is the one which is making the tailored, the tailored immunoglobulins. Okay, NK cells and cytotoxic T leukocyte targeting infected cell is also shown. So with this, let us go to the study questions for you to work at home. Define the term immunogenetics, explain its importance in the tailored medicine. What are immune-related genes? Elaborate the acronym of immune-related genes. Where are TLRs located? What are their functions? Explain somatic hypermutation in PCR genes. Where are KIR genes located? How many of them are present? What is their function? How do NK cell and the cytotoxic T leukocyte kill a target cell? Okay, so let us acknowledge the online resources and public domains for using the material and content to develop the current teaching material to you all. Thank you, one and all.